Hey everybody, uh, back with part two. Um, I hope uh, if you got a chance to watch part one, um, I hope you understand now that uh, in the realm of wideband audio, uh, any attempt to uh, put put any kind of audio into the into the pin, mic pin socket here uh, is pretty much a waste of time. Uh, for 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 not going wideband audio, uh, I know some people out there get uh, you know sound really nice doing this way, but for, for wideband audio, uh, you're going to be spinning your wheels, you're going to be wasting your time doing this, and uh, part one uh, should show how to get around that and uh, prep the radio uh, to to introduce our own audio. Alright, so once we cut that trace, um, now we have to have a means of coupling our own audio to the radio and uh, uh, con controlling or regulating our voltage for our carrier. All right. Now, once we cut that trace, we cut the trace. Uh, the radio only does one thing now on transmit. It just gets us on a channel we, we want to get on. It produces our carrier frequency of our of our selected channel. All right. So, me personally, I, I use the motor mouth mall design. Uh, for lack of better words, I, I'm just going to call this an in, in, interface between our. Uh, this is a go between between our audio and getting it to to the radio. All right. So now we need a means of coupling uh, this board to the radio and we're going to do that by means of a Darlington pair transistor alright Darlington pair transistor can be done in, in, in two ways really you can make your own uh, two transistors wired together in a high gain configuration alright such as this two transistors uh, wired together Darlington pair or you can buy one already pre-made this is the NTE2638. Alright, I'm going to say, if you do this, uh, pay special attention to, to the pin configuration because the pin configuration, uh, I'm going to be using a, a general purpose NPN transistor, the, the uh, 2N2222 and the NTE152. Uh, be careful of the pin configuration of these. Uh, the pin configuration of the uh, 2N transistor goes emitter, emitter, base and collector and pin configuration for the NTE-152 is base, collector, emitter so you just be careful while you're doing that if you, if you go that route and the pin conf configuration of the NTE-2638 is going to be base, collector, and emitter so no matter no matter which route you go you're going to have to heat sink this you have to mount these to a heat sink and if uh, this is overkill uh, the size of this heat sink but uh, anybody who knows me knows I, I, I go overboard uh, with, with my equipment. So you compare the mass uh, of, the, of this heat sink to the small package. Alright, and then when you mount that to the heat sink, it's got to be isolated. Uh, the collector of the NTE-152 is part of the tab. So that's going to have to be isolated. They come with these uh, little, little mica washer or mica... Uh, I don't know if you can see that in there actually. Little mica insulator. And the plastic screw insulator that, that goes on there. I, I use a, uh, a 440 size screw. I drill a hole for a 440 screw and uh, mount that to there. You have to use a heat sink compound as well. Get a good thermal transfer. All right. So once we have that, okay, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the uh, the power requirements of this board. Now this is his old design. Uh, the new board come out, he has out now is, is half the size, it's um, surface mount, and it requires only uh, two power supplies. Alright, getting the power supplies, this board does require three, alright, because the device is using this board, these devices here require uh, two power supplies, a positive voltage and a negative voltage. Alright, now these do come, these, these, these uh, devices do come in single uh, supply packages, like that are used on, on the new design, but this one, uh, uh, dual polarity because you're going to need a a 24 volt power supply or it'll come be also be 30 and you're going to need your positive voltage and a negative voltage power supply all right oh by the way this all the stuff i'm talking about may seem a lot but really this is the entire setup just this these are power supplies in the, in the box right here radio and modulator box I, I know people that have uh bigger lunch boxes than this so broken apart and may seem like a lot but it, it's really not it, it's a very actually a very small setup all right the power supplies that i use are these I'll zoom in here and let you look at that in case anybody uh out there 
Maybe you want to do this. There's my power supply to use. This is my dual polarity power supply up top. This is my 24, 24 volt power supply. I'll show you the front end of these. Top here, positive voltage, negative voltage, common ground. Down here, there's a 24 volt power supply. Just with this, just your positive, negative. What you do is you tie this common down to your negative side down here. And these two commons connected to the board ground. All right, then obviously your positive voltage gets uh, wired to your positive voltage here and your negative uh, voltage on this power supply is to your negative voltage on the board. All right, so I got to mention also, uh, this uh, years ago I uh, I was using this board and I loved it so much that uh, I wanted to uh, get, a, get a backup because you never know what can happen. Uh, lightning strike, power surge, uh, things happen all the time like that. So I contacted John uh, Motormouth and he informed me that he was not making the board anymore. He had no plans to make any more. So I thought, well, that stinks and I, I can't accept that. I, I have to have a backup. This is the heart of my station. So if that goes down, I'd, I'd be SOL. So I did the next best, best thing. Uh, I reverse engineered this board. Um, I gotta say that I do have a formal education in electronics. I'm no PhD or anything like that, but enough enough to do some damage. So during the course of study, we covered these devices used on the board. And I'm not gonna give away any secrets or anything like that. I respect the guy very much, and I'm not gonna blab any information uh, about specifics of this board. But I know these devices extremely well, extremely well. So that made the job a little bit relatively easier. So once I uh, Reverse engineer the boards are able to draw a schematic. When I drew the schematic, then I make my own circuit boards up here um, by photo develop technique. Uh, here's the board right here that I made. Here's my trace pattern I, I, I created from the schematics. All right, anybody who's interested in making their own circuit boards for whatever reason, for whatever projects, uh, YouTube photo develop PCBs, and there's a lot of stuff that comes up on there. And then uh, once I make a trace pattern, then I draw all the holes for the components. Get all the components mounted, and then that's it. I have to mention also that the circuitry used up here, circuitry used up here, it is not used on on, on this in this design. I'm not sure why uh, they put this on here. They must have had some intention, but uh, later decided against it. But it made it onto the board, so I did not include this in in, in my design. All right, and also these onboard potentiometers. Instead of using onboard potentiometers, I have external potentiometers of, of the same value uh, with wires run uh, to the board. All right, and we're going to come over here. This, this was uh, my my reverse engineered board. Uh, like I said, normally this is all buttoned up real nice and neat with the cover on it, but uh, for, for our demonstration purposes, I have everything all pulled apart, so uh, it's everywhere. Here we go here. Yeah, instead of onboard potentiometers, I run wires. Uh, two external pots. A little bit sloppy, but uh, it works wonderful. Uh, it was one of the first ones I built for myself. Um, here's a heat sink down in there. My drawing compare is mounted to that. My external pots. It's a carrier control. That's tube emulation. This is the final audio. Oh, and this is asymmetry. All right. So once again, uh, the board, the board really, it doesn't make you sound any certain way. It merely, it's, it's going to pass your choice of audio, your choice of how you sound through the board, through the drawing compare, and then out to your radio. But we need the board because now we're going to be controlling our carrier. I'm on a carrier, the voltage for our carrier. We control uh, the, the amount of audio. In fact, I can't remember which ones. I haven't used this board in so long that I can't remember the controls. Uh, mine worked so good, I, I, I actually retired from my, uh, my little radio museum. So anyhow, like I said, we need this to control our uh, final audio, control our carrier, and uh, uh, produce asymmetry, which I'll do another video uh, with the oscilloscope and show what's that all about. So. Again, our audio comes in here. We man we we, we mani manipulate uh, the audio, not not the tonal qualities. We can ma manipulate that to to uh, the drawing compare transistor and then onto the radio.
All right, so in, in the, oh, you know what, here, I'll, I'll show this right now. Uh, the carrier control, show you what goes on in there. I have the voltmeter attached to the output of the modulator board. In the background, I hope you can see uh, the wattmeter. All right, I'm gonna be adjusting uh, the carrier control, and I just wanna do a demonstration and uh, to show what's going on there with the voltage and its relation to the carrier. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and key this. Okay, now watch the voltmeter and watch the wattmeter. As we drop this voltage, the carrier goes down. We're going to reach a point right now. It's going in a little my little two-pill class AB amp. You can see it, it drops on so far. The amp drops on. Right. Voltage comes up, causes that carrier to come up. I can go way up the charts. I can get a hundred watt carrier. Out of uh, my little two pill AB amp, but of course I'm only on the 10 watt scale. So I'm gonna keep that weight on. So there's that. That's that's uh, one of the functions of the board is to regulate our voltage for our carrier. All right, all right. So I'll be back. I'm gonna do another video on. Uh, I'll show you this ACL scope and, and get this whole thing fired up and um, get some audio signal in here and we can see how that looks on the oscilloscope and uh, we'll, we'll see what really sets us apart from direct audio just plain direct audio inject is the asymmetry that's where uh, things will really open up that's when you get some serious audio punch that, that uh, puts it way over the edge over uh, just direct audio inject so alright I'll be back and we'll uh, check things out on the oscilloscope